All right, so now I have uh, some idea of the order of operations for this project. So it's time to get down to business. Uh, first task on the list is to uh, saw out the uh, stock for all these uh, flat parts and uh, square them up. So uh, let's, let's look at, we've got three parts here that are very similar. Um, we have two of them that are an eighth inch thick, so we'll kind of group those together. And one of them that's uh, 219 thousandths thick. We'll set that aside for now. Let's, uh, let's tackle the eighth inch thick ones first. We'll group, group all those together. So I see uh, quantity wise we have a quantity of one of the uh, top plate and a quantity of ten of the middle plate. And we're making two of them. So we need 22 pieces sawed out and uh, milled to size. So let's, let's get started on that part. First thing we need to do is figure out how wide to saw out the stock. Uh, the overall dimensions are one and a half by one and a half. For something like this, uh, I like to add about an eighth inch to it to uh, leave enough stock for uh, machining. So let's uh, saw them out at one and five eighths inch square. We don't need to lay them all out. And I'll show you why in a minute here. All I need to do is lay the first one out. Uh, while we're at it, let's go ahead and uh, do the same thing for the quarter inch part, or the, uh, the thicker part, the 219. Save a little time. Same thing, we don't need to lay everything out, just, 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 one, uh, just the first one. Okay, now let's... Uh, Move on over to the bandsaw and saw this guy out. Alright, so when we're setting up the bandsaw, there are basically two things we need to uh, consider. Um, one is the material we're cutting, in this case aluminum, so we need to know the cutting speed of the material we're cutting. And the other is the uh, number of teeth per inch on the blade. Uh, let's talk about cutting speed first. Uh, cutting aluminum and aluminum generally cuts at about 250 to 300 surface feet per minute. Uh, for this machine that's wide open. This, I think wide open the highest step on the pulley on this one is 300 feet per minute so that's where it's set. Uh, another thing is the number of teeth per in, number of teeth on the work. You, have, you should always try to keep at least two teeth on the work at all times. In this case uh, this is a six tooth per inch blade we're cutting eighth inch, that doesn't quite make it, but I don't have anything finer than this, so we're going to use this, and I'm just not going to push it very hard. If you do, what you end up doing is putting too much of a load on the, the teeth and the blade, and you'll start chipping teeth off. So, uh, this is fine for the quarter inch stock, but for the eighth inch, it's a, it's a little coarse. So, just keep that in mind, and not push it. Alright, so here's our piece of aluminum plate, eighth inch, we're going to cut. Um, you always want to have as little of the blade as exposed as possible. So you see it's way the guard's way up in the air, or the guide is way up in the air, so let's move it down. Cover up as much of that blade as possible. And let's uh, let's saw some strips out. never want to get your thumb or your forefinger in line with the blade when you're pushing because if you slip and obviously you're going to put your put your thumb into the blade that's a real common accident on bandsaw when you're pushing keep your hands on each side of the blade so if you slip you won't go into the blade Once worked with a guy who was cutting a piece of stock like this, and he did. He was pushing it like this, and he slipped, and he pushed his hand into the blade, and he saw it about two inches up into his hand between his index finger and his middle finger. He wasn't a happy guy. All right, so we got one strip. Here's here's why you don't have to lay everything out when you're cutting a bunch of pieces like that. We got one strip. Let's shut this off since we're going to be working around it. We got one strip cut off, so now we have to, we can use this as a guide and just kind of mark out additional strips as needed. We're going to need about three of these long strips plus one more part. 
let's go ahead and saw those out. parts like this as, as uh, patterns, always remember to use the same one because if you use the last one cut, use a different one each time, your tolerances can stack up and you can end up with a bunch of parts that are too big or too small. So always use, set, set the first one aside, use that for your, your pattern. I don't know if you can see it or not, but I'm sawing on the right side of the line, so we leave a full inch and five eighths for the, uh, the parts. We got a full eighth inch for uh, stock to, to mill. Alright, that's three of them. It gives us 21 pieces. I need one more. We'll just sneak that one out over here. There we go. Misplaced my first piece. Alright, we need one more, one more single piece, so we'll just do it like this. Expensive, so you just make sure to lay it out so you use as have as little scrap as possible. All right, so that takes care of the eighth-inch thick pieces. Now let's cut out the quarter-inch. waste as possible. Alright, now we got all the strips cut out. Now we just need to uh, cut, the, cut the square pieces off these strips. I don't have a fence for this machine, so what I usually do is just lay one of them out. Like that. And use the miter gauge, line it up with where I want to cut, and just use a clamp as a stop like that. And I can cut out a bunch of pieces without having to measure each one.
All right, so we have 22 eighth inch thick pieces and our two bottom plates, quarter inch thick. Let's move on over to the mill and uh, square them up.